Hey guys, so it's been about five months since my last video, which is actually quite a really long time ago, so I apologise about that. I also apologise about the camera angle, I'm everything's moving about in my room and it's all a little bit confusing trying to get the right angle so I can actually film. But yeah, we'll cope. I suppose I wanted to give you a bit of an update on what's been going on over the past five months really. Uh, I'm now 11 months on tea, so next month will be my one year. I think the last thing you heard from me was probably uh, my six months on tea and the cancellation of the surgery in France and what I've sort of been doing since then. Probably should have watched my video back so I can remember what I did. But I suppose I'll catch up quickly. So last summer I went to France to see Dr. Coustal to have my top surgery and it got cancelled the night before due to there being an issue with my bloods and so I had to come home without having the surgery done which was devastating yeah that that all got sorted my, my bloods are all sorted I've been put in the all clear I have a factor 7 deficiency but it's nothing that should cause me any problems in the long run uh, it's something that I'll have for the rest of my life and I carry a little blood card around with me just to warn people in case they get into some kind of traumatic incident um, but that means that I've been cleared for surgery so because of that I went to a consultation with Mr Miles Berry back in January at uh, London Welbeck and he was happy to give me the go-ahead for surgery as long as the haematologists were happy so I did I went I went ahead with booking it all in uh, it's all it was all sorted you know, I had it all all planned out, had um, figured out the money, well, most of the money I was going to do it all on finance and have someone take it out for me because at the time I wasn't working and I didn't think I had a good enough credit score. The consultation went really well. I got to meet uh, his nurse, and her name has escaped me, which will really annoy Dylan if he watches this, so I apologise, mate. But it's gone. Uh, yeah, but her, his nurse was absolutely lovely. She answered all of the questions that I could have possibly had about all of the money and that side of things. And then I met Mr. Berry himself. And I spoke him through everything that's been happening. And well, apart from feeling sorry for me, he were, he well got me to strip down in front of my mum so he could feel up my breasts and see what was going on, really. Uh, he worked a hell of a lot differently to Dr. Gustav, which was... I don't know, it was kind of weird because I was expecting one thing and then he did it completely differently and he explained it completely differently which is why it's better to go in a country where they actually speak your language because then you understand what's going on. So yeah, all of that went really well and I had it all planned. I had a friend that was going to be taking out the finance in their name for me and that was it. I was, I was all sorted and I was ready to go and I had the date booked in for the 1st of June and I've had to cancel again <laughs> the friend that was meant to take it out decided to go back on his word and I couldn't take it out in my own name <clears throat> and none of my family were able to because of their own personal financial difficulties and I don't have the money <laughs> to pay it up front so <sighs> This will be um, the second year of not having surgery, which is quite difficult to cope with. Um, it put me into a position where I started thinking, is it is it actually worth going private anymore? It's It's really expensive and all of this, and maybe I should just go with the NHS. And I sat down with um, a few other trans friends and we worked out the waiting times and because when I, I, I'm now being seen at Charing Cross and I saw Dr Barrett I think his name is um, and he refused to give me uh, a referral to go through the NHS for top surgery only because he believed that even though I was I see him December, 
So I was, what, about eight months on tea? He refused and said that I hadn't been on tea long enough and that my body hadn't changed enough and all of this. So he wouldn't give me an NHS referral, which means going through uh, Dr Lorimer's private one runs out in June. So if I don't have anything sorted by then, then I'm going to have to going to have to get two NHS referrals and my next appointment for Charing Cross is booked for August and then my next appointment after that will probably again be booked for next year August and then I wouldn't be able to get surgery till the next year August it's all gone a little bit tits up really it's the problem with all of these waiting times is <laughs> if something goes wrong you can't you can't fix it quickly which makes life really difficult so I've decided I'm gonna try saving again uh, hoping that I can have surgery about the same time next year and I hope it's third time lucky I suppose don't really want it getting cancelled again I don't think I could cope with that I'm hardly coping now with the idea that I have to wear these stupid binders for another year it's doing my ribs in more than anything so saving again Hoping to find more of the money this time, putting more of my student finance away. My mental health isn't quite there, obviously because of everything that's sort of been going on. Um, I spend a lot of time when I'm not working or at uni just lying in bed doing nothing all day. Um, I haven't really, I don't really eat much. I'm definitely not drinking enough. Uh, I'm, I'm finding it quite hard to care for myself at the moment. It's meant to feel like things are getting easier, but it's not. Um, I've got some good friends that are keeping me going. Trying to get me out, trying to get me to do things. So I'm not moping around at home. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, that's surgery and updates for you all. So, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, uh, I'm 11 months on tea uh, today, 13th. Um, so, next month will be my one year. I thought I'd run you through some of the changes I've had since whenever I last did a video about the changes. Uh, I don't know if you can hear a difference in my voice. I, I sometimes can, I sometimes can't. The, the main time I can hear a difference is when I'm singing, because I can no longer reach any of the notes that I used to be able to. I'm now singing as a bass when I used to sing as a top soprano, and that's really, really weird. Um, especially as I can't, I can hardly sing tenor. Um, getting anywhere above middle C is just not happening for me, which is really, really weird, to be honest. But I'm getting used to that. It's nice. It's nice getting to learn how to sing again, which sounds really weird. You'd think it would be like getting on a bike. You, you know how to ride it, but it's, it's not, because the whole pitch and range and all of that, the, 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 the brassiness and the actual tone of my voice, it's all changed. It's completely changed the, the, the dynamics of, of singing, and it's weird, and I ha am having to learn how to sing again, even though I'd been singing for, oh God, what, about four, 13, 14 years? But yeah, so voice, um, I very, very, very rarely get misgendered these days. Uh, I usually usually get sir, gentleman, young lad, uh, especially, I, I, I was more worried about with me doing the paramedics and stuff, going to patients and then misgendering me, but no, they've they've just seen me as a, as a young guy, which is brilliant. I forgot to take my shot this month uh, for a whole week, I completely forgot. And I thought back and I realised that it was because I forgot that I had to keep taking testosterone. I, I, I'm so much happier with the way I look now. Um, apart from body-wise, I mean, face-wise and everything. Uh, I, I'm so much happier that I look in the mirror and I forget that I need to keep taking these hormones in order to, to stay this way. So, yeah, so I've got breakouts and everything happening because my hormones are now all over the place because I took it so late and oh god it's a nightmare so don't ever forget to take a shot. My facial hair I gave it a trim yesterday so it's quite short but um, that's growing out really really well. You could, I've got a couple of pictures that might be on my Facebook or on my Instagram I can't remember which one um, where you can see how long it had grown and I could literally pull it out to here and I had like all these strands that were just looked weird. I could sort of pull them out 
and it would look like I had this like straightened but it was weird um, I wasn't a fan of that which is why I've given it a bit of a trim uh, I've grown plenty of body hair wasn't something I was looking forward to I don't think oh, I suppose some people look forward to it I've got most of it on my belly uh, plenty on my back and loads in places that I didn't know body hair could actually grow which is quite weird and awkward as, apart from all of this surgery stuff, I'm happier with where I am now uh, due to the hormones. I'm glad that the misgendering doesn't happen, it doesn't make awkward situations and I don't have to worry about going out and this going wrong and all of that. Um, apart from the fact when you go into the men's toilets and there's only one cubicle and there's a line and it's like everyone expects you there to be going for a dump and you're not, you just really want to pee but you can't use the urinals because parts don't work that way yeah that's that's the only thing I'm finding awkward at the moment is is bathrooms only because people don't don't doubt that I'm meant to be in there they just judge why I'm using the cubicle but I've lost uh, 11 pounds since January um, not money I've lost more than that uh, weight wise I've lost 11 pounds. I'm trying to reach a stone, so my body's my body's slimming out quite nicely. It's just my hips that are, yeah, just the biggest curves. But a lot of people have said that my my shoulders have broadened. Um, I've got a bit more of a rugby build to me. I've got quite, I don't know. I've got quite a thick body. I don't think I could ever be a skinny person, which is annoying. But at the same time, it's kind of cool that my body has broadened rather than just masculinized into some skinny kid which is quite nice not that there's anything wrong with that I just I don't know it's it's nice that my body has decided to do that Lucy and I uh, met up recently very briefly uh, to talk about things that we could be doing in the future so I'm very uh, I'm hoping that very soon I'll be able to go to hers and we'll be able to do a few proper videos um, better camera angles better lighting and seating and you'll have her pretty faces instead of this ugly mug which would be good for you guys um i think that's what gets us more views at least i think that's what gets us more views you should have a video very very soon a proper video lucy and i will get onto that as soon as we possibly can although i don't know what we're going to talk about so if you have any ideas then let me know or let us know other than that i think it's probably time that i love you and leave you i shall See you soon, speak to you soon, whatever I usually say. It's been that long. I can't remember how I am my videos. But yeah, I shall see you later.